there back in, oh gosh, my, it was over, had over five years. You had a gentleman here? A good friend of yours, actually. Memories of a young Sugar Bear Harris, better known to the wrestling world, is Kamala the Ugandan Giant. Well, he, he started in the same territory that I just talked about a minute ago. Mm -hmm. with, 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 uh, I was his first man, and I'll never forget the first time I seen him. Never, ever, 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 ever. We were in Cleveland, Mississippi. Get your maps out or get on your computer. Look for Cleveland, Mississippi. A little teeny dot on the map. And look, it was a big, I can't know how to explain it. It was almost like the Sportatorium in Dallas. A big tin building where we had the, uh, the wrestling matches at. And, and normally they had uh, auctions there, cattle auctions and things like that. The parking lot of this particular building was all gravel. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't paved, it was rocks. And God, if he was a bad guy, you were in for it. Because then fans would, would come in, before they got to the ticket booth, they'd fill their pockets up with rocks. Needless to say, when they were mad at the bad guys, who got stoned? And not that way. Who got stoned? I'm not talking cheeky, baby. Stoned! <laughs> I'm talking about rocks. Well, they pick them and throw them up at you and hit you in the head. Medicine. Yeah, we used to get stoned in the middle of the ring in Cleveland, Mississippi. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> we're in the dressing room. It was about an hour before the matches, and all of a sudden I look out the window, and I see this old beat-up car pull up into the parking lot. And I'm talking about beat-up. I think windows, masking tape on the windows and, and everything, and uh, pulls in, and the door opens, and this big, giant guy got out. He was huge. He was really young and a lot bigger. Uh, he was really bigger then than he ever was. He lost weight through, through the years. But uh, Jim, Jimmy Harris at that time, he, he was just huge. He was a very big man. He's still big. And we all look at each other and go, who is this? And Frankie King says, we just, he's going to wrestle. He's going to have his first match that night. It was his very first match. And uh, they called him Sugar Bear Harris. And his manager was Percival Pringle the third. So, uh, Paul Sugar Bear, probably my, probably my best Kamala Sugar Bear story. This was a few years before he became Kamala, two, two, probably two or three years before he became Kamala, is that his, his wife really wasn't what we call smart to our business. Uh, and we had a live battle royal on TV. We had live TV. It, it showed on, I think it was on Friday evening, if I remember correctly. It was taped in Greenwood, Mississippi, not taped. It was live in Greenwood, Mississippi. We had a battle royal. Uh, Kamala won the battle royal, won $500. This is 1978. 500 dollars was a lot of money then. Now you win 5000 But this was $500. He won the battle royal, won $5,000, beat up everybody, threw them out of the ring, 20-man battle royal. Anyway, long story short, he lived in a little, uh, I think still lives there, uh, Senatobia, Mississippi. I better not give too much details. I don't want y'all knocking on his door. But uh, after the matches was over, he goes home. He goes in, walks into the living room. Who's sitting on the couch with the youngins all around him? His wife and all of his babies. His wife goes, $500, baby. Let me have it. And he goes, $500. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, $500? You, won, you just won $500 on TV on the Battle Royale. I saw it. All my friends seen it. Well, uh, I don't have it. This is the gospel truth. His wife went to the kitchen, come back with a shotgun. Where's that $500? I saw it on TV. All my <laughs> friends saw you win that $500 on the TV. We need that $500. I want that $500. I don't have that five hundred dollars. He still talks like that. <laughs> he does. He I is. don't have that five hundred dollars. Well, she cocked that gun. <laughs> this is the gospel truth. I have a cross around my neck, and it's not made of bone. <laughs> he ran across the street into the woods, across the street, and I swear he hid out all night long in the lumber yard across the street from his house because his wife was going to shoot him because she thought that he had just got the five hundred dollars. No telling what he'd done with it. Whoa. So, needless to say. The next day, Mrs. Harris got some lessons on the wrestling business. <laughs> but th that story is legendary in our business that, uh, that his, for, he won his first battle royal and his wife wanted that $500. And uh, gosh, we didn't make $500 in six months at that, and back in those days. 
but uh, he, he was a, a great guy. I, lo I love him to death, Kamala. And, and he went on from there. He, he learned the craft right there with us, with, with the Freebirds and, and myself. There weren't the Freebirds then, of course. Uh, they didn't become the Freebirds until they moved on and started working for Nick Gulas in Tennessee. And that's when they became the Freebirds. And later, Buddy Roberts uh, joined them. And this is so many stories, so many pieces of the, of the puzzle. But Kamala became Kamala in Memphis, courtesy of Jerry Lawler, which a lot of our, our talents back in those days came through Memphis. Most mm -hmm. of the guys, that, I, I would say close probably 90% of guys that made success in our industry and, and most of the veterans of today have went through that territory. And that's, you learned your craft there. And Jerry Lawler was a, a master of the craft then and he's a master of the craft today. So he saw uh, James Harris and he took him, Art Lawler, Lawler's an artist, you know that. Mm -hmm. He took him and painted some moons on him and some stars and his face and took him out in his backyard, got his eight millimeter camera and filmed him going through the woods. You probably can, I think it's on YouTube. You probably still can find that on YouTube. With an eye, though. And, 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 he, and he became became Kamala back in those days. So, uh, dear, dear, dear friend. And, I, and an, another note on Kamala. Uh, this was, like I say, middle 70s, 76, 77. Racial tensions in was really mm -hmm. not like it is today. And uh, we'd done a little thing where... Uh, well, I, I, I had a, I reached in my pocket, we was doing a, a television promo just like this, me and Kamala standing in front of the ring, and I'm talking about a city that we're going to. Jackson, Mississippi, this Tuesday night, don't miss it! And I said, Kamala, if you win this match, I'm going to give you a bonus. And I pulled out a $50 bill and took it and threw it on the floor. And he went over, bent over to pick it up. When he did, I kicked him in the butt. <laughs> and he went whoosh, flat out on his face. You knocked him down? Uh, yeah. He's huge. I know he's huge. The World Wrestling Federation was live at Richmond Hill Hall in Queens, New York, Monday, March the 22nd, 1982. In the opening contest, Johnny Rods beat Barry Hart. Manuel Soto with the win over Jerry Johnson. WWF Intercontinental Champion Pedro Morales battled Greg the Hammer Valentine to a double count-up. S.D. Jones battled Steve King to a draw. Larry Sharp defeated Lee Wong. And in the main event, Polish power Ivan Putski with the win over Adrian Adonis via disqualification. If you are in Queens Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to help keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our acclaimed Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports in the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders, Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling.